Hello, everyone. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to tell you about our latest research into attacking JDBC. First of all, let me introduce our team. I am Chen Hongkun. My partner Xu Yuanzhen and I are both from the security team of Alibaba Cloud. We are responsible for Alibaba Cloud web application firewall defense system construction, including related attack and defense technology research. In this talk, we start with the derivation of JDBC attacks, including the JDBC concept and root cause of vulnerability. Then we will share some new ways of exploiting JDBC we found. Now let's go. The first question is, what is the JDBC and JDBC attack? For a Java application, they want to connect to a particular database, especially relational database. It uses a standard set of API called JDBC. The full name of JDBC is Java Database Connectivity. Uh, and it's meaning in the Java SQL package in JDK. JDBC drivers are sentence-side adapters. Install, install on the silent machine, not on the server. It can cover requests from Java program to protocol the DBMS can understand. JDBC drivers provide JDBC specific implementation for different databases, such as MySQL, Oracle, DB2, and so on. For developers, JDBC help them to share the specifics of individual databases. Now let's see a typical code for connecting to a database through JDBC. First, it loads a specific driver and then invoke driver driver manager's connection measure to initiate a connection to a specific database. Uh, our following shell assumes that the attacker can control the connection URL, and we will discuss some of the attacks in this case. In the case of a controllable JDBC connection, the basic attack idea is as follows. The attacker set a manager JDBC URL and trigger a JDBC connection. Then, the JDBC signal connect to the mini server specified by the attacker. Uh, attackers often take advantage of some security flaw or some higher privilege feature in the JDBC driver. They, tri they trigger these problems by constructing a specific return data from the mini server. Finally, they will result in a remote code execution or other vulnerability. Let's have a look at some of the exploits that have been disclosed and take in depth analyze for the cause of vulnerability. Starting with the MySQL Center arbitrary file reading vulnerability. And this vulnerability is caused by the MySQL future that has existed for a long time. The future is that the load data local in file statement can read the silent files and send them to the server. There is no doubt that this future is very dangerous and the uh, my SQL document, documentation clearly states that the silence are silence shouldn't connect to any untrusted server. 
But the truth is, that is always hard to be sure. And since this is the specification of my SQL, it it can affect more silent, including the my SQL JDBC driver. Mm, an attacker can forge a malicious my my SQL server, and after the silent connects, the silent will first send some initializing query package such as the set. Send query package to same name, same name trust trust set. Then the malicious server can send a file tran- transfer packet specifying to read any file from the silent. The second one is the my SQL JDBC silent deserialization. Serialization vulnerability. Uh, the bug exists when my SQL JDBC JDBC driver directly deserialize serialize certain types of data returned by the server, which can result in RCE or if the if the gadgets are of a property. Using the statement interceptor, the property provided by the driver, you can set an interceptor to perform additional operations before or after the certain kinds of statements. So the full attacking chain is that first, set a statement interceptor attribute to server status diff interceptor class. We, when we auditing server that's diff interceptor code, you can see that this interceptor allows the silent to send a special query, specific query to server. In addition, the get object method is used to process the returned column. In the get object method, the driver will directly call a read object method for deserialization of a branding and blob types. Therefore, the server side can can server side control data by the but the attacker can trigger deserialization vulnerabilities as long as it returns false file the serialized data. Of course, the class and property names of interceptors are different in various versions of JDBC driver, as shown in the table. Okay, JDBC attack technology is usually a good attack option in the following scenario. For example, find a, uh, find a new gadget such as junction or fa- faster junction gadgets. Uh, that's because in some gator setter or construction method, they will in the initial as a database connection directly. Uh, with uh, with JDBC attack, uh, we can achieve uh, RCE or arbitrary file reading vulnerabilities. And it's uh, easy to add this data center or construction method to the original gadget chain. Another example is some application in property is po- is some JDBC configuration interface. Uh, such as Spring Boot Attitude. Uh, Spring Boot is one of the most widely used Java frameworks. Uh, Spring, Spring Boot Attitude is a sub project of Spring Boot. Attitude brings pro- production ready future to our 
application. Developers uh, often use it to monitor their app, app gathering metrics, understanding traffic or the state of our database. There are many dangerous configuration. Typically, JDBC configuration, which can be many many built by an attacker to specify the application connect to many shared database, and then attackers can exploit it with a JDBC attack. Also, the attacker technology can also be used to phishing or creating holy pods to counter attackers. Now here are some typical example of JDBC attack. The first typical example is the WebLogic vulnerability discovered by Xu Yuanzhen in 2020. Uh, the CV number is CVE 2020-2934. Because the JDBC configuration interface, Interface create 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 a JDBC data source form of WebLogic based stage system has no a proper a pro, appropriate CSR, CSRF token check. Therefore, the attacker can easily launch a CSRF attack together with the JDBC and finally can achieve an impact of RCE. In the back stage of some application, of also usually has the function of JDBC configuration, such as some uh, content manager system or the back stage manager system of various middleware, um, like the back stage of for Wildfly. The JDBC connection can be reconfigured. And because the driver for H2 is built in, you can achieve a RCE using H2 JDBC attack. Another example is when Spring Boot has H2 control enabled. We can use H2 JDBC connection to achieve a RCE attacks. Uh, Attacks on the H2 mentioned above have also been disclosed. H2 is JDBC URL connection supports the init parameter to execution and in, 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 initialize in SQL set, statement. In this case, run script from can be used to import an external SQL script. And using the create, using the create, create any, any function statement is an, is a, in an external script allow you to define a function using the Java source code. And then we can invoke, invoke the function using the call statement to trigger the execution of the Java code. Regarding the exploit of H2 driver, it can be noted that it requires the use of run script from statements, which is a disadvantage to complete an attack because the run script from statement, which need a silent connect to the attacker's HTTP server. Uh, this, uh, which, this is subject to ne network restrictions. In fact, since H2 is an embedded, embedded database, it's possible to find an attack that doesn't require any external connections. Uh, I, I first found an attack that take advantage of Groovy ST trans, transformation to lead to remote code execution. So first, let's go back to where we started. 
why we had to use the right script from statement. Even though the init property provide a condition to execute, execute an, any SQL statement, but after testing, we found that it, it wasn't possible to introduce multiple, multiple SQL statement. And for the create edit, edit function statement, additional call statement is necessary. So it means it takes a muni of two statements to complete the attack. The, but the, the run, run script from statement is used to introduce an external script to, is, to execute multiple statements. So if this can be reduced to a single SQL set, sentence to a complete to remote code execution, then there is no need to get an external connection. So we went through the source code for the create alias a statement and found that the defend Java method source code in create alias statement was all handed, handed over to the source compile class. There are three kinds of processing logic in the source compare for Java, JavaScript, and Groovy. All of the, all of which are compared in order to finally execute the, the alias function. And the Groovy is a press class catch up our eye. And we immediately realized that along with uh, Hacking Jenkins Part 2, shared by Orange in 2019, it's the same scenario, scenario and can be attacked with uh, meta programming. As, as the Orange shell, using the AST test uh, annotation, where well, let the developer explore, explore the AST dueling Computation, computation, and perform a session on the AST. As the POC show, we can exceed Java code in, in a session and press class can trigger the Java code. However, in the real world, Groovy's dependency are no built into H2, so this attack depends on whether Groovy com companions are including into, are included into the application. This was obvious, obvious, obviously no very generic. So we continue to look for another attack, searching in searching in the source code, we quickly discover that in addition to the Create alias statement. There is another statement that can introduce a user-defined source code. And in the in the phrasing of the create trigger statement, we can call load from source method of the trigger object class as the as shown. We pro we presently surprised to find that in this method, the JavaScript source code is not only be compiled, but also it accused, accused. As the source code shown, it calls the evil method directly. And since screen engine was finally used for execution, and there was no sandbox. We could introduce any Java class we wanted in JavaScript. So with this, we can easily achieve the purpose of RCE without the need for call or other statements. As the POC shows, JavaScript the start with JavaScript commands and we can then simply use the runtime's exact method to achieve RCE. Next, 
Let's see what other database can be attacked besides H2 and MySQL database. First, let's look at IBM's DB2 database. Uh, following the previous experience of attacking my SQL driver, we found hints about, about vulnerabilities are likely to appear in properties such as auto deserialize used in my SQL. So we look through the document of DB2 JDBC driver to search suspicious properties. I noticed a property called a silent reroot server list GND name. As described in the document, this program supports a silent to provide additional server location after the fail in the first connection. It can connect, it can connect to the standard, standard by server. And the standard by server information is a look at Look up through JNDI. So it's easy to imagine that if we provide a malicious JNDI address and control the silent to fail the first connection, the silent will look up the specific malicious JNDI address. And this is a notorious JNDI injection vulnerability. It can also be found in the driver's decompiled code lay. The context rule of measure is finally called for query. Referring to the use of JNDI injection vulnerabilities, the attack can set up a many shows LDAP service. And when the, when the silent connect to the LDAP service for query, it can easily complete the RCE attack using uh, make silent to load remote code base or other JNDI injection attack method. Mm, JNDI injection attacks are not the focus of this discussion. As, uh, as various various exploits have been disclosed and are available online. Mm. And our next target is ModShap. ModShap is an open source implementation of the JCR specification and standard API. Uh, the full name of JCR is a Content Repository API for Java. Uh, it's a specification for Java platform application program interface to uh, to assess the content responsibilities in an in a uniform manner. Using the JCR API, you can get data from a variety of different systems, including file systems, relational databases, and so on. A standard JCR, JCR connection for model shapes is in the format, is in the format shown above, which require responsibility name to make a connection to specific repo. In this way, the JNDI string in the connection URL gets our attention. And we reasonably Assembly layer in addition to supporting the JCR protocol, other protocols such as LDAP, LDAP should also be supported. And after trying, it turns out that you can indeed initiate, initiate a JNDI root request to a specific LDAP server. So this is another typical JNDI injection vulnerability.
continue our research, we decide to try an attack on Apache Derby because it can be used as an embedded database just like H2 database. Uh, with the embedded database, it's usually easier to implement attacks because the server and center can exist in the same program. We found a suspicious code fragment when we, we were looking for sensitive codes in the Derby driver code. In the socket connection class, uh, he called the read object master directly in the read message method. Uh, this method is used in Java. The read object method is used in Java to this 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 serialize the input stream. This code fragment obviously may have deserialization vulnerabilities. In fact, uh, from a security code point of view, this, this so socket connection class is suspicious. Uh, you can see from its uh, construct method, it wraps a socket and wraps a socket output stream and input stream into object output stream and object input stream. The read message method seems to read an Read and uh, um, pressure pressure the socket input stream. If we can communicate with the web socket, we will probably be able to trigger the deserialization vulnerability. So we go back invocation chain and see whether to call the read message method. We found that the call is. Uh, is the inner class, um, master re receiver three, three the, for, or for replication message transmit class. As you can guess from the class name and package name, this code snap is related to Derby's uh, ability to replicate Replicate database. So I went through the Derby documentation session on replicating a database. And then that database replication can be initiated using connection properties. This is exactly what we want because the connection property is controllable. In fact, uh, if we go, if we go all the way up the code chain, you can see that where, whether this thread is started depends on the, uh, star master properties is enabled. As the code show, it's, it's a star replication master boot method used for judgment. And in the code, we can find that we can specify which host the socket connect to by controlling the slave host property. So we can set the start master property to true and the slave host property to the address of the malicious server. Then Derby will try to connect to the malicious slave server and communicate. Uh, at this point, we return a malicious serialized data will be will be deserialized, less achieving the effect of remote code execution. So the malicious connection demo is shown in the code. And the malicious slave server code is as follows. It's very simple. The many short slave server can return serialized data directly after the connection is received. So let's, let's move on. Looking at SQRite, which is also an embedded database, 
we trace the code for its collection and find that when the JDBC YLO is controllable, we can define its resource name in the open method as show code. And we following following into the extract resource method, we can see that the URL constructed by resource name called the open stream method. So this can be used to complete at a SSRF attack, such as define the JDBC URL with the show. Um, using the JDBC URL can send an HTTP request to specific IP. However, SSRF vulnerabilities are not enough. Using SQLX resource sub protocol, we can connect to the specific IP to download specific database files. So, if the JDBC URL is under our control, we can control the database files, the silent open. Based on it, how should we attack? Uh, refer to 2019, uh, 33C3 topic, Slack code execution from start using SQLite. We can consider a scenario that there are controllable JDBC YL and uncontrollable Slack statement. A brief code is shown in the finger. The URL is controllable, but the SQL statement is executed are not controllable. In the controllable database file, there are data definition language statement used to create a table or create a view. This, this data definition language statement actually appear in print text in database file. So if we if we inspect that the uh, uncontrollable statement is a snack star from security table, we can create a view named security to hijack the snack statement to execute a subquery defined in the create view DDL. In this way, we can transform the SQL statement that we can we can control into the query statement that we can control. Now let's move on the next step. If we have a controlled connection, we can open the loss extension option on SQLite. So if we have a controlled file, we can RCE by loading this extension. In fact, extension is a dynamic link library or shared object. So in Slack statement, load extension function can load a DLL or, or SO and it's exact it, it SQLite 3 extension init function. We can simply put the evil code in SQLite 3 extension init function and trigger evil code execution. But getting a major file is not always easy. Since the SQLite often has memory corruption vulnerabilities, we can exploit this memory corruption to attack. As shown in the code above, we can use Megan's POC to create a local SQLite database file with a malicious security view. Uh, many guns is a number of vulnerabilities that exist in SQLite caused by memory corruptions. Then, special JDBC connection to download our database file and open it. When the code runs to query for security table, the Megalens POC is triggered to cause the JVM to crash.
Finally, let's take a look at how open source software defends against JDBC attacks. Observing the previous attack method, we can find that vulnerability usually appear in some dangerous JDBC wire L properties. So, some open source software takes the method of fitting sensitive attribute to fix such vulnerabilities. Both Apache Derby and Apache Dolphin Schedule have been exposed to my SQL JDBC deserialization vulnerabilities in the past. So, they are, they are the two open source software we studied. The CVE number for the two vulnerabilities are CVE 2021 and CVE 2020-11974. Uh, the Apache, Apache Derby defends a white list of properties. Properties known in the white list are not allowed. And Apache Dolphin Schedule removes sensitive properties from arguments. So, we want to know that is there a new exploit way to bypass property filter? We choose Apache Derby, which uses the 5140F MySQL connector version as our target. For this fix, the, fir the first idea is to see if the filter parameter method is uh, consistent with the JDBC connection processing parameter method. You can see in the Derby's source code that the filter use the MySQL connector default pressure UI method. So, by default, they are consistent. Therefore, we jump out of the, of this idea and take a look at the overall JDBC driver loading logic. For the, for the loading of JDBC driver, they use the SPI technology. SPI, the full name of SPI is the Java Service Provider Interface for JDBC all register driver are stored in the Java SQL driver file. In 5140S version of my SQL connector, there are two register driver. One is the most common JDBC driver. The other is fabric my SQL driver. And this fabric my SQL driver has catch our attention. Refer to the my SQL driver documentation. You can see that fabric my SQL driver is used to connect to the my SQL fabric system. My SQL fabric is a system for management farm flow of my SQL servers. Then we study researching in the source code of fabric my SQL driver. If you pass in a URL that start with the format as the code show, it goes into the fabric driver's processing logic. You can see that in the in the code the connection URL is controlled by Con concat by the uh, fabric protocol host and port parent parent trace the fabric protocol parent. We can find that it's default to HTTP protocol. Enter the fabric connection method. In this case, you can see that use the 
XML RPC silent. Continue to follow up. We found that it, it finally makes an XML RPC code in the error safe call method. And we can specify, specify host and port of this code. So, it looks like we have got an SSI vulnerability, but it's not enough. Similar to the, my SQL deserialization vulnerability, we want to see if the fabric of my SQL driver had made any errors in processing the returned data. It's, it's clearly visible in the code that you use the new SAX pressure method for the, of the SAX pressure factory class. And it directly to get a SAX pressure. And the SAX pressure factory doesn't say any security attrib attributes. So it's a, an obvious XM L vulnerability, XML external entity vulnerabilities, which can finally can cause arbitrary file reading or SSI. So the idea of attack is very clear. We first can try a spe specific JDBC URL to enter the processing logic of a fabric driver. And then we set the host and port in the JDBC URL to our malicious HTTP server. And when the silent make a connection, it will send an XML RPC request to our server. We control the silent to return a malicious XML document. Then XXE vulnerabilities will be triggered when the center process this XML document. We can read the corresponding files from the center by using the out-of-band XML in external entity attack technology. So, the connection code of the silent is shown in the finger. We can trigger the XXE vulnerability without any attribute parents. And the many shows HTTP service code is shown in this finger. Contract many shows time XML document is easy. So that's our research on JDBC attacks. It's very dangerous to let an attacker to control JDBC URLs. We recommend that if you should let user define it, you, you must strictly restrict the contents of JDBC URLs, including the properties and protocol and so on. So thank you very much.